Thank you. This film humanizes murderers by taking the viewer into the mind of various serious killers. The scariest murderer in the movie eats people for dinner, literally, and he has no moral compass whatsoever. But the kidnapper in the movie is also crazy, but has some type of rules and regulations and seems a bit more human. And he, and he can sew this guy, he's, he's very skilled. The bad guy follows innocent young women for weeks and waits for the right opportunity to strike. It shows him knocking out a woman and driving her to a secret hideout. After that, the serial killer puts the girl way down underground so no one could hear her scream. The bad guy is dealing with an identity crisis and having a tough time being comfortable in his own skin. Sometimes he feels like a man, but other times, he dresses up in female clothes because he wants to be a woman. At first, he tries to vlog about his unique experience, but when that doesn't work, his identity crisis is one of the reasons that lead him to seek professional help. His psychologist knows all of his deepest, darkest secrets. The psych sticks a middle finger to their client confidentiality agreement quicker than the Menendez boy's doctor did when the main actress starts asking questions about the killer. I do have the ability to use Kevin's full name and bring him forward as he has in the past, but I wouldn't do that. Tell me his name, doctor. The killer underestimates the main chick and thinks she's a pushover just like the other victims. She's definitely not a weak link and is cut from a different cloth. She's a skilled marksman and will gun down anyone who stands between her and her safety. The main chick keeps having these flashbacks of when she was a little girl with her father. Needless to say, her childhood was rough, but her traumatic childhood experiences actually comes back to save her in the end. The victim's story is the leading story on every news channel. The killer hides out in plain sight, and that's what makes it so difficult to capture him. The authorities track him down to a location near the train tracks, but they're way too late. Time is running out, and a woman takes the law into her own hands and visits the home address, and the dumb lady doesn't even call for backup. So if she dies, no one will find out until days later. She starts snooping around and finds clues that he's the killer that they've been talking about all over the news. Her theory is proven correct when she opens up one of the doors and finds one of the missing girls. All hell breaks loose after that. The murderer kills the lights. The darkness is scary or whatever, but the scariest part is the lady with the gun can't see the killer coming, so he could sneak up and take her out at any moment. Then, boom, she hits him in the chest. The missing girl survives and is returned safe and sound to her family. At the end, we learn that the cannibal survived, and there's a sequel tease during the scene where one of the characters is at the restaurant. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below, and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>